Hi, and welcome to another session of the Mindful Eye Digital Darkroom. I'm Patty Schultz, and in this tutorial I will walk you through editing a photo, converting it to black and white using a third-party plugin, then creating a smart filter to stylize the photo. Warning! If you're a purist and don't feel that modifying an image is the right thing to do, stop watching now. I'm taking you on a journey that drastically changes the photograph. Okay, you still there? Then let's begin. Many of you have been or have seen images of the Slot Canyons. In fact, it may be one of the most photographed regions in the United States. I love the place. I love the lines, the color, and the texture of the Slot Canyon walls. But since there's so many images, I hate to even show my images. In fact, you probably have this exact same image if you've been there before. But I wanted to do a tutorial on using smart filters, and while going to my images, I looked at the images of the slot canyons and started playing with this one. In Lightroom, I made some minor adjustments, then decided to convert the image to black and white. I could have used the adjustments in Lightroom, but I'm going to use the Silver FX Pro plugin from Nick Software. Now, disclaimer, I don't work, work for Nick Software, I don't get a kickback, I just happen to think their plugin is pretty good. But before I do that, I first am just going to convert this image to 8-bit mode. Now, a couple of reasons I'm doing that. First, it's going to make the process go a little faster on the tutorial. But more importantly, something I'm going to do later on is to add a, a filter to this image, and that filter is going to require that I am in 8-bit mode. All right, now I'm going to open up the Nick Software Silver FX Pro plugin inside of Photoshop. It takes a little bit to, to launch. And now you're going to see that there are a couple of already preset options that I can choose for these images. And I've got one I've already kind of made my own little preset for that, and it's got a little soft blue tone to it. Now I'm going to use that. I could play with some of the, the controls here with blight, brightness and contrast uh, and structure. And one of the things I really like about this plugin is this structure ability. And it really gives a nice punch to the, the black and white images. All right, I'll just say that that's what I want. Click OK and let it process that. Could take a few minutes to get that going. The next thing I'm going to do is I, I like this image, but it's a little bit too vertical for me. I'd like to stretch it out a little bit. I don't know that I would do this normally, but I just want to show you a little trick in using the crop tool. So I'm going to select the crop tool from the toolbar and just select the, uh, the image, and then I'm going to pull it slightly out to the right side. When I hit the return key, what that's going to do is increase the canvas size. There's, I could go to the image menu and, and select increase canvas size, but this way I can kind of do it visually. The next thing, I'm going to select the marquee tool. Okay, this is where I'm really going to start distorting this image a little bit. And I'm just going to select the so, a slight portion of the right hand side. Now, edit content aware scaling. If you haven't played with this option in, in Photoshop CS4, I, I suggest that you at least try try this with one of your images. It does a really good job of figuring out what you want to scale without trying to distort it too much. So once I have that selected, I'm just going to pull it over to the right and say OK. And it does a pretty good job of, of scaling it for me. Now I'm going to do, I want to deselect that, so I'll just do select, deselect. And let me just kind of zoom in a little bit for you. And because there's so much texture already in the walls, that's where I scaled right about there, you don't really see that it's done anything. That that could be exactly how it, how I, it was shot. All right, the next thing I want to do is, is add a filter to this. So I'm going to go to the uh, Layer menu. And I'm going to convert this, this um, top layer to a smart object. Go to Layer, Smart Objects, Convert to Smart Object. And you can see over in the, the panel that the layer adds that little extra icon to tell, it, tell you that it is, in fact, a smart object. 
Now, again, here I'm warning I'm going to really distort this a little bit. So now that it's a smart object, I'm going to add a filter. And because I know that these filters require that you're in 8-bit mode, I've already done that. If you ever come to these filters and they're all grayed out, that's because they're, you're not in 8-bit mode, you're still in 16-bit mode. This one I'm going to select poster images. Now, I will tell you I've tried some of these images or these filters on many of my images before in the past, especially when you first get Photoshop. I've never liked them, never used them. So I'm really surprised that I even attempted to, to try this. But when I did this on the slot canyons for this poster image, and I know it's kind of hard to see, we don't have much very much room here, I was so surprised at how much extra texture it added to the canyon walls. Now, once I have the poster images, I can make any adjustments. The posterization is kind of the key thing that I want to change. You can see if I have it all the way to the left, it just really posterizes it. But if I just push it all to the way to the right, that's what gives me that nice little texture to that. All right, once I click OK, this is really what I wanted to show you, is now when you add a filter to your, to your smart object, you've got a lot more control here. You can see that my poster images, uh, poster edges is, is added here. If I double click that, because it's a smart object, I can come back and add or change any of the options for that particular filter. I, I really don't, so I, I'll just click OK. The other thing is the icon here on the far right, if you double click that, now what it gives you the ability to do is change the blending mode. And let's say, for example, I'll change that to, to soft light. And I can change the opacity. And because it's kind of built into that smart object, any, you can make changes at any time you want. It won't affect the actual image itself. The other advantage to using smart objects, or smart filters in this case, is that you can also edit the image. For example, if I wanted to, if I saw a dust bunny or something on the image, I can easily just edit that image just by double clicking on the smart object itself. Now, the message is going to come up to say, okay, once you do this, you need to make sure you save it. And it opens up the image into a new tab. And let's say, for example, I just want to get rid of that little bot knob right there. I'll just use the uh, spot healing tool and just click that couple of spots there. That actually is part of the wall. But what once I've made any changes there, now this is actually changing the image. If I if I had wanted to do this um, outside where it didn't change the image, I'd have to do it a different way. This actually is changing the image. When I press save, that's locking that change back in. And then in CS4, because it the way it works, it opens up two different tabs close that second tab, which is the actual image itself, and now it returns back to a smart object. Well, that's it for using smart filters and smart objects. I hope you enjoyed this, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.